Hey guys, it's Wistaka here coming at you with another Dota 2 video, and in this one I'm going to show you some pretty cool tricks that everyone can do that are really easy to pull off. The first one that I'm going to be showing you in this video is a trick that involves teleporting and going invisible at the same time. So let's use Weaver as an example here to kind of illustrate the point. Weaver has an invis spell, uh, Shikuchi, which has a zero cast animation. So basically what that means is when you go from point A to point B, and you use Shikuchi, Weaver is able to cast the spell without actually impeding his movement. He's able to do it as one smooth motion. So basically what this means is when he's teleporting, it has zero cast point and he's able to teleport without breaking the channel. So let's set up some hawks here for our boys to teleport to. As you can see when Weaver teleports, he's able to go invis. And all these other heroes here, are able to do the same. As you can see, none of them break their channeling of the teleport. Um, Invoker can also do it, so let's show some pretty cool stuff with my boy Invoker. You can see he's able to Ghost Walk, and any... let me break the uh, Ghost Walk right quick. And any Shadow Blade Carrier is also able to do the same. So, those are the heroes that are able to do it without any problem. Slark is kind of an exception to this rule because although Shadow Dance makes him go invisible and has zero cast point, he can go from point A to point B without impeding his movement. I suppose it's not treated as a true invis based spell as you can't, uh, you don't actually gain true sight of Slark, at, it's impossible to gain true sight of Slark, so I suppose it's not coded as a uh, invis type spell. So as you can see when you try to teleport with Slark and you do Shadow Dance, it doesn't work. It's a, uh, it's kind of a redundant point to make, I suppose, because Slark can actually just shadow dance and then teleport. A lot of heroes that have bait time teleports are also able to do the same thing. For example, if you have Bounty Hunter and you're trying to teleport to a tower, you can actually just, well, let's see. So you have Bounty Hunter, you try teleporting to a tower, you can actually teleport, oh, kind of messed that up. You can actually teleport during the fate time, but you have to be really quick, as you can see. You're teleporting to a tower during the fade time, but you have to be extremely <laughs> quick when you do that. So it's much easier if you just try teleporting to something and then pop your invis afterwards. It, you don't have to time, your timing window when trying to teleport during the fade time is extremely low. It's like 0.4 seconds. It kind of depends on what the spell is. So you don't want to be doing that most of the time. You just want to try teleporting. I mean, you just want to use your invis after you try teleporting. So now that we've got those heroes out of the way, let's talk about some of the other heroes that have invis based spells. So Templar Assassin, she has Meld, but it impedes her movement when she uses it. Although it's a zero cast point and she uses it instantly, you can see that she doesn't go from point A to point B. She stops. So let's set up a Hawk here. As you can see, when you try to teleport, Meld cancels the teleport. So she's out of the equation here. Let's try Priestess of the Moon. She, when she goes from point A to point B, and you cast Moonlight Shadow, you can see that she stops for about one second to cast her ultimate. So she's going, use her ultimate, she stops for a second, and then she goes. So when you try teleporting, her animation stops her channeling entirely for her uh, teleport there, so she's not able to do it. And Treant, he's also not able to do it, because of his cast animation prevents his um, ability to teleport. If he goes from point A to point B, he casts it and he just stops. The Treant, much like Ricky, once he's already invis, he's able to teleport without breaking it. That's just kind of how the spell works, much like uh, Ricky just stated earlier. So I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the tricks, and there's a few more to come. So I hope you enjoy. Hey, to hit and run. So the next trick that you guys can do is actually something that's pretty cool. You can do it with the bottle. Um, fountain effect actually lingers on for quite some time. Some people argue that this is a bug that you can do with a bottle, but uh, it's been around since Dota 1, and it simply works because the fountain effect lingers on to you once you leave the fountain. As you can see, when you leave the fountain, you actually maintain the fountain buff onto you for maybe about 3 or 4 seconds. So that's kind of how this is going to work. So once you leave the fountain, you can actually use a few extra bottle charges, and it fills up for you. So if you want to leave the base a little bit early without sitting in the fountain too long to um, regen all your mana or something like that, 
this is a pretty cool trick. Another interesting that you, thing that you can do is you can actually, let me just burn some mana really quick here. Let's say you're going to your lane and you want to blow something like a marcher machine. You can actually bottle up and you can see that you get your mana back. You can actually get a total of two charges by doing this. So let me go back to base and show you once again. Rearm again. So let's say I go into the lane here. I use one bottle charge, drop a spell, use bottle charge again. You can see I don't get the full effect of the first bottle charge, but it's pretty long. So if you have a hero like Magnus, um, who has a pretty low mana cost, Shockwave or you know, Venomancer, you can probably drop a Plague Lord or just drop a Venomous Scale, something like that on an opponent. The, the possibilities are endless with what you can really do uh, in terms of using the mana there. Another cool thing that you can do is say your, one of your friendly ally heroes has an empty bottle, they can give it to you and you actually fill the bottle up for them as you can see there. So if you didn't catch that, I'll show you again. Head back to base. Your ally has an empty bottle. Rearm here with Tinker. And go to their lane. They give you the bottle while the fountain, fountain uh, buff persists onto you and you fill the bottle up for them. So that's a pretty cool trick and anyone can actually do that. You don't need to be Tinker to specifically fill up the allies bottle charges as long as you teleport and you have the fountain buff linger on lingering on you which lasts about three seconds or so they can g they have a three second window of opportunity to give you a bottle to fill it up so that's a, another cool trick that you guys can check out so we've covered some pretty cool invis mechanics that you can do while teleporting for our carry and offlane type heroes we've talked a little bit about some bottling techniques which are generally done by our mid heroes Let's go ahead and give some love to supports. I'm going to be showing you a pretty interesting ward spot right here. There's a tree that you have to cut. You place your observer ward there. And the purpose of this observer ward is that it's probably never going to get dewarded. 99 out of 100 times it's not going to get dewarded. As you can see, it gives you a vision of this ramp area here for a little bit. It lets you show who's kind of going up and down the ramp. It gives you a uh, vision up to there. And where you see that dark part's actually from the crease gives you vision right up to there and as well as shows you the rune. Once again, it's not an ideal observer ward spot. It's one that you want to put if you feel the other team has a gem or something and a little hard pressed for a uh, vision. So you just want to place that one there. Whoops, kill ward. I'm going to kill the ancients here to show you another really cool one. Uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty good thing that Crystal Maiden has really good base damage. Wow, the ancients spawned right before. Um, anyways, so the way you place this observer ward is there's two patches of grass here. There's a big one and a small one right below this uh, black pole here. So you want to place it on the little one right there. Let me kill this camp really quickly. And once again, it gives you a vision of this rune area as well as prevents the ancients from spawning. And it's really nice because, well, first of all, if people place sentries here, they're generally going to deward um, if they place a sentry like right here, this is the, this is the ideal place to put a sentry. First of all, I see a lot of people just placing it here. Um, if if you if you think your opponent has an observer ward placed exactly here, you want to place your sentry right here because that way, um, if if they do something sneaky like uh, place an observer ward here, you can deward it. You can deward this entire area by placing a sentry ward right here. Um, if you think your opponent has an observer ward here or here, in th in that case, you can put a sentry right here and. It dewards everything. Very, very few times do you ever want to actually place a sentry right there. So uh, while I explain that, you can see the camps didn't actually spawn. And if I can get the rune to spawn top, I can actually show you that the whoops, I must spawn neutral there and spawn. Rune. Oh god, knowing my luck, it's gonna take me like five tries. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man, is this real? Spawn rune. Holy! No way. Okay, I thought I, like, what? Oh my gosh. Okay. So you can see it spawns the rune. Anyways, uh, this is going to be another observer word here. This one's pretty useful. If the other team has a bat rider or a tinker, a hero that's, you know, pretty annoying and flies around, um, you're going to see, notice that in the fog, there's a lot of cliffs up here, and there's one that's much higher than the other ones. These ones are a little lower. The cliffs up here are a little bit higher. If you place an observer ward right here, you get vision of this entire area, um, which is pretty nice. Um, as you can see, it's up to this point right here. This is like the block of vision you get. You can see that the tower gives a little bit of vision here. So it's up to here, and mo for the most part, you want the vision um, for this area right here, where all the trees are. Um, so it's good against heroes like Batrider and Tinker, ones that are really sneaky and are up to no good. 
Um, the other observer I'm going to be showing you is one that's generally placed to block the... Let's just check. Oh my gosh, look at all that room. That, that looks amazing. Um, the other <laughs> observer word that I want to show you is one that blocks the ancient. So generally you'll see people place observer words here, whoops, right here, to block the ancient camp. But this one is uh, somewhat easily dewarded. Um, of course, supports place the sentry here behind the camp, and then they get the crap beat out of them by the ancients, but there's actually a better one that you can place. So let me kill the ancient camp here and then show you um, where that one is. So I'll kill the ward, so kill ward. You can actually place it from the low ground right there, and you can see I'll get out of the way. The minute came, and there are no ancients. So even from down here, you can place the observer ward in this little nook right here, and it'll block the camp from spawning. You can put a sentry ward there, an observer ward there, whatever you like. Observer wards last a little bit longer than sentry wards, seven minutes. Sentries only last four. So uh, depending on who the who's who's um, who's ancienting other team, if it's a tinker, you might want to prolong it a little bit. It might be worthwhile dropping the observer ward there. But uh, if you feel that observer wards are a little precious, you can always drop sentries. So those are the cool ones. Uh, there's another really interesting one that you can drop in this camp here that I should probably cover. Sometimes you see people drop a cheeky observer ward right here, which blocks the camp. It's a pretty difficult one to click the first time you try placing it. Ideally, uh, I like to just get vision over this tree right here, this big puffy one. And then I click um, where about, uh, about a third into it. I click right there. And you can place it anywhere there. Um, it's a little bit difficult if you try clicking into the actual spot. So you want to click on the tree. That's like the easy way to do it. So we'll kill those observer wards and I'll show you where the other um, cheeky one is. Because if you place this observer ward here, where the puffy tree is, you'll notice that you can actually just, if the enemy drops a sentry ward right here, they can just tango this tree and they have access to it. So here's another tricky one that no one ever picks up. You can actually drop, a, you can drop an observer ward right here. As you can see, you can't actually you can't actually see that one if you just walk in there. The only way to get to that observer ward is if you tango one of these trees. But it's such a rarely placed. Um, so I'll spawn the neutrals here to show you that it's not going to work. And you can see that the neutrals haven't spawned yet. And uh, just in case you guys don't believe me, I'll kill another camp. I'll spawn the neutrals. As you can see, this camp has spawned, and this one hasn't. So this is a really nice observer ward too if you want to place just to block the camp. Um, so those are some pretty interesting ones that no one really places. So this is going to be a slight extension to the observer ward part of the video. You may have seen me just jumping around with the blink dagger flying all over the place, getting to really tight to reach spots, but I'm going to show you how to get to all these um, perimeter kind of obser observer ward placements just by walking around. So the first one you want to click the base of the cliff here and you can actually place it as if it were on top. As you can see, you get vision of all the trees, just like the one I showed previously. And since Tinker is flavor of the month, I'll show you guys some other places. Um, so I'm going to be blinking around just to get a little bit faster, but uh, I'll walk into the actual place I have to go. So tier two top tower, there's an opening close to it. Just walk around, follow the maze, and place the observer ward directly on top of you. As you can see, you get vision of a really nice area here. Tinker sometimes will blink up here, sometimes he won't. So this one's a little bit more risky to place, um, but this one's a lot more common. So once again, close to tier two um, for the Dire Team on bot lane. Follow the path here and get to this little crevice here in between these two trees and place the Observer Ward right on top. So beside this one right here, you want to place it there. And this one's much more common. Sometimes you'll see Tinker's blinking into areas like here and here. This one's really common, especially if Tinker's playing on the Radiant team and he's trying to kind of siege this tower a little bit or just pressure it. He's going to blink into areas around here, which are generally pretty hard to see. So this Observer Ward, much like this one, is, uh, is, is pretty good to deal with heroes like Tinker and Batrider. Just remember that Observer Wards aren't exactly the most abundant item in the game. So if you're going to place them, Make sure you kind of have uh, your team's consent, in a sense. Um, it's kind of hard to cooperate well with your team, I suppose. But uh, if your team is down for it, if you have other abilities like Lycan Wolves or um, Treants from Nature's Prophet, Broodmother, Spiderlings, things like that are really good for scouting as well. So if you can afford to place Observer Wards like this, they're really good at taking down Tinker and they make him play a lot more cautiously. So that's kind of a, how to deal with one uh, Flavor of the Month hero. For the next portion, I'll be talking about abilities like Time Walk, Blink, 
Um, just all types of links. Links from Anti-Mage, Queen of Pain, Link Dagger, just any hero that's using that, and how you can use it a little bit more effectively to help escape from ganks and things of that nature. So if you have a whole bunch of heroes chasing you, generally you're probably like walk over here and time walk and try to teleport out, just getting past the barricade of trees. But if your opponents have blink type spells uh, to chase you, or have a blink dagger themselves, um, they're probably going to catch you and just stun you up and kill you. So instead of doing that, you can kind of mind juke them by walking really close to the barricade of trees as, as if you were going to time walk over here. But just time walk into the trees themselves over here. As you can see, you're very like tightly covered. There's actually no vision that you can get unless you have flying vision of some sort. So you want to kind of trick your opponents by using your skill, uh, skills cleverly. So once again, if you're getting chased here, instead of time walking over here, you can just time walk into the trees and once again you're tightly covered. And there's a lot of areas that you can do that in the Radiant Jungle. You can time walk into the little nooks and crannies here. It just takes a little bit of practicing. So instead of time walking into like really, um, I suppose you'd say obvious places, you want to you wanna kind of trick your opponents. You want to walk all the way here and there's still a little time walk in here maybe and your opponents might think you walked, uh, you know, you time walked all the way around. You might think you blinked all the way over there. So there's some really clever places that you can do on the Radiant side. There's some uh, places on the Dark side as well that I can show you. So let's say you're playing a farming void on the dire team. You're about to get ganked. You walk all the way to the trees here, and instead of time walking all the way over here, which is probably what you'll do, or time walking over here, in which case someone might blink and follow up on you, just walk all the way over here and then time walk over here. They probably think that you went the entire, you know, time walk length, but you just um, literally went like 200 range in front of where you were. So you want to use your spells effectively. Especially your blink type spells, um, if you have something like a teleport scroll, it's very easy to escape when you do these kind of, of uh, tricks. So if your opponent doesn't have flying vision, sometimes even if they do, they might already be um, walking over here or something, and they might not um, be immediately st immediately be able to stop your teleport scroll. So use your spells effectively, mind juke your opponents, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy. So thank you everyone for watching. If you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. I'm sorry if I explain everything as if people are 5 years old. I just want everyone to kind of enjoy the content of my videos. So rather than simply being succinct and short and sweet to the point, I want to elaborate on a lot of things. Make sure that the beginner players as well as players that are just starting Dota are able to enjoy my videos as well. So um, with that being said, hope you guys enjoy. If I do another video like this, um, let me know if you want it to be shorter or longer. Should I just do small clips or should I make a um, kind of like an anthology of tips like the, with this video that I just made. Um, so once again thanks for watching and I hope you guys enjoy and until next time GG.